Hi, I'm James from Sonic Couture and I'm going to show you our new drum machine product. Now the idea here was to reimagine classic drum machines of the past but using modern sampling techniques. So uh, to see if we could take acoustic samples recorded in new ways and create something akin to a kind of vintage analog or digital drum machine, a kind of hybrid between those two things. Let's just dive straight in and have a look. If I hit play, see we've got a sequence playing here in our Euclid sequencer. A lot of percussion, a lot of drums happening here. I'm just going to turn it off a second and just show you around the interface a little bit. You can see each of these squares features a single drum. We're using classic drum machine um, naming like BD for bass drum, snare drum, rim shot, tom tom, etc. etc. And all the main controls you need for each drum are self contained in the square. So you get um, a volume fader, you get pan, you get your uh, mute and solo. So you don't need, we haven't got a whole separate mixer window like you might have in a lot of drum rumplers. We wanted to just kind of reimagine uh, a workflow. So that's that. And you'll notice that each of the squares has these, these white knobs on them. Now they're, they're channels, um, channels that we recorded or created using um, analog gear. Uh, but you can think of them in terms of uh, on an 808 or a 909, you might have a control for uh, snappy or attack or decay. So um, that's what these are doing. Let's take a look at the bass drum. I'm going to solo that. Now, um, the channels we have here are labeled beta, sub, knock, trans, and space. Trans is short for transformer. And for that, we pass the entire sample set through an overstay, a saturator unit. Everything we've created here is created organically. So it's either created uh, with microphones during the recording, or it's uh, passed through analog gear, or in the case of space, uh, we took everything to the echo chambers in Rockfield Studios in the UK. We've got two different chambers. So you can change the envelope on those, I'll just show you how in a moment. Um, the beta is, as it sounds, a mic at the front near the, uh, near the beta hitting the skin. The sub is a mic on the other side, what, what is called the front head. Um, we have knock, which is a, um, a contact mic placed on a specialist, a drum contact mic specialist uh, company called Yuko, who I think went out of business, but they made these kind of unique little contact mics, and that's on the shell of the, um, of the kick drum. So let's take a listen to those. Here's our beta. Here's our uh, FET 47 sub. This is the contact mic, so it's quite a kind of weedy sound, but it just fills in that mid frequency. And then we've got our transformer and our space. Now, the whole thing about drum machine is you can just use these uh, squares, you can tweak the sounds like this, but um, being a Sonic Couture drum product, you can edit it really in depth um, and do some serious sound design. So if we click on the name, we bring up the edit window and you'll notice we've got uh, traditional amp envelopes. If I let that out, you can hear the full decay of the, um, of the kick drum. Uh, we've got filters, we've got two filters. Uh, you can load up any filters you want in each of these slots, which is really useful. And we have uh, compression, EQ, saturation, etc. here. So, what, but what you can do, as, as regular users of our drum products will know, um, if you want to get really geeky and in-depth, uh, you can go deep into the different channels. Now, you may have already noticed we've got these little squares up here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. These relate to the channels. So, if I just... Uh, Just go in to our beta channel and cut this right down to a tiny little click. I can vary the start time, which is often quite useful to get it really clicking. 
um, filter that. I can then move on to the sub channel, filter that right down. If you open it up, you hear the natural um, the natural sound of the mic at the top end. You can filter it right down. So, for example, um, what we can do in this in-depth editing is just kind of little things, really, like we might just want to let out the decay only on the sub and on the space. At the moment, it's quite, it's quite a short kick drum space, but we can and then maybe filter that. So a kind of doom reverb. Okay, now uh, all of these samples, all of these sounds were recorded in very, very dry, um, a very, very dry studio booth. Um, there's absolutely no external reverb at all. That, and um, the key point about all the samples is that there are 10 ram robins per hit. Now with a traditional analog drum machine like an 808 or a 909, each hit is unique because that's analog circuitry. Every single drum hit is a unique event, so the hi-hats have a kind of chatter to them. Uh, nothing will machine gun, nothing will sound too rigid. That's in contrast, of course, to things like the uh, drum tracks or the DMX or the Lindrum, which were just very tiny single samples, and they would very much do a kind of machine gun effect. So if you want to turn off the round robin, you can. Here's our robin icon here. As it is, you're hearing each time a new sample. And that applies to the echo chamber samples, the transformer samples, everything. It's just got that slight variation to it. Let's take a look at the snare drums. The snare drums were pretty interesting because for these we used a polyend sample robot. Um, and we recorded them in multiple passes in order to separate different elements of the snares. Let me try and show you what I mean. Okay. This is our snare drum. And again, we have these channels here. We've got, I'm gonna run through them. We've got body. This is a mic pointing dead center at the center of the head. We've got rim. This is a mic, uh, a snare drum mic clicked, uh, clipped to the side of the rim, pointing at the rim. Now, this is much more pronounced if we turn damping off. So for each of the snare drums, you get um, that you have the damping on and off option. And if you click that button, you get a completely different sample set of an undamped snare. Um, you can let that out and hear the full, the full ring. I can, I can pick a 13 inch snare. There's a variety of 14s of different depths, different tuning. As I say, you can. Okay. So, as I say, we have body and rim. Rim is a much thinner sound, and you get the harmonic there. Um, so, these were recorded with the drum robot. A pass on this, as you can hear, with no snare wires at all. But if you want, we did another pass and captured only the snare wire. So, just like an 808, you could completely blend the snappy. And you could modulate this, you could just assign that to a MIDI controller if you wanted, tweak that in and out. Okay, now the other cool thing about the snare wires is you can select how tight it is. So you go from really loose, really rattly, and if I let out the decay, you can hear that decays for ages. Now, it's actually quite a useful, it may not sound it, but it's quite a useful sound because you can really get filthy kind of um, low-tuned snares with these. And so you can set it to medium, which is the kind of traditional midpoint where you might have it. Again, you can have a natural decay on that if you want. And you can really, really crank it up so it's practically choking the drum which you don't tend to hear drummers do that much, but it's actually quite a useful sound. That 
chambers. And again, we've got uh, space from the echo chambers at Rockfield. The echo chambers were recorded with the snare wire channel in. So if you just take that out, you still get some snare wire in the space. Again, if I go to number five, I'll be able to be able to let out the decay only on that. Okay, that concludes the snares. Let's take a look at the rim shot. Here we go with the rim shots. Rim shot, you have wood and steel. Again, you can turn the wire on and off. Um, the rim shot is uh, not, you know, not like a traditional drum sample library. It's not just someone kind of hitting the rim and the, and the, the, the head at the same time. It's um, more, more in the tradition of classic drum machines where the rim shot is a kind of click. And for this, we got the poly end sample robot and kind of tilted the drum and positioned the, the, uh, the stick of the robot. So it just kind of hit inside the rim and the, and the, and this, this, the head at the same time. But again, so we've got a variety of channels. The body sound is really chunky. You can turn the wire on and off. It's quite subtle, but you get this kind of crunch at the bottom. And the rim is pointing just at the point where it hit. Not so much wire in that one. A lot of wire in that one. And the wood is nice. It's a wood rim. Got a, um, a snare drum with maple hoops on it, which is quite unusual, but um, gives a very different sound. The wires on and off makes a big difference here. And again, we've got the space, which sounds really good on the, um, on the rim shot. Uh, with a short decay. Can, if you could compress it. Okay, moving on. The tune set of four toms. Again, with a bunch of channels. Uh, we've got a transformer channel here, which is really filthy. Um, and you can uh, select stick or mallet, and the mallets are tuned um, a tone lower. So you can get you can get some pretty cool bass sounds out of these. Sometimes you need to chop out some of the boominess. And these are pretty cool with, with filters. Uh, if you see like the ladder filter. And you've got a filter envelope. mic on the shelf, which is, sounds really good on the toms, really useful. Uh, mic under the bottom of the toms, and the transformer channel, and the echo chamber. Echo chamber is great on the toms, just close that down. Get a kind of gated tom sound. Okay. Okay. Just going to move on. Just going to keep it moving on. The hats. Um, the hats are really cool. Um, three different hats: twelve, sixteen, and fourteen. Now you'll notice you've got two blocks. You've got a closed and an open. Um, again, that's a kind of uh, you know, departure from a traditional drum library, it's more kind of drum machine. So you've got a link button. So if you keep that on, everything you do and everything you do in the channel will um, 
affect both closed and open. But it does give you the opportunity to kind of craft a different open sound. And you can even choose a different hat for the open, for the closed, if the link is off. So, so you can keep a chunky, clo uh, chunky closed hat sound and then really kind of filter your, um, your open hat. And again, the cool, the cool thing with um, the closed hat is you've got three degrees of tightness. So, which is really nice, really useful. Um, and the two mics here, I'm just gonna mute that. So we just hear the closed. Uh, two channels, conventional stick. Nice and clean. And uh, metal. Again, this is one of the contact mics. Um, I think we've got it filtered here. And these are really chunky and metallic sounding. Um, particularly on the um, particularly on the open hat. So you can build a real th these are almost like noise. Um, just like a noise oscillator in an analog drum machine, but they're complete created organically from the original recordings. Um, there you go. There's a lot of noise in this. Um, if I link these back up, let's have them both doing um, metal. So you can just filter that up, and you've got a. So there you've got something much more like uh, much more like an analog drum machine, but uh, created from a real hi hat. And you've got the real round robin performance happening there. Uh, if I was to turn off the open hat, well, that's the half hat. You've got half and open mapped here. If we just go for the. If I just play a kind of repeating pattern of uh, closed hats and switch the robins off, you hear it goes dead. And that's that traditional sample re-triggering sound. If you just drag a sample into the DAW, repeat it, that's what it's going to do. Back on. It's got that, it's got that little drum machine chatter to it. Um, you can really um, craft your own hat sound here. You could bring a bit of stick back in. Bring some brightness in. So they're really great. I really love these hats. As I say, you've got a 12 which is really small, kind of dance music type hi-hat that I found is quite noisy. And you've got the Great Big 16, which tends to need a little bit of EQ. But when you do, it's really nice. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Uh, you've got some cymbals. You can select edge or bell. Let's take a look. Three channels here. Stick. Body to a different mic position, slightly further out. And the same contact mic metal, which is pretty crazy. Uh, again, we've got that filtered. You can hear a lot of harmonic content in that. You can have 20, 21, just different characters of ride. Seems cool. Again with the round robins. Just hear it start to, to move, very nice. Um, symbols. The symbol, you have a crash and a kind of splash. So the crash, very kind of 909-y. 
we've got uh, an interesting channel here. Um, I processed these through a homemade um, oil tank reverb. Uh, it's a kind of extra metallic texture. As I say, we've got this or a splash. Okay, we won't dwell on the symbols too much. Um, we'll go on to the percussion. We've got a nice cowbell that I want to show you. Let's put everything back on. There you go. Hear the cowbell. Two channels, stick, contact mic. Contact mic's quite dead and metallic. Um, what's nice with uh, all the percussion, uh, we kind of sampled uh, slightly varying articulations for the normal and accent. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, I should mention because it's an important point. We don't have any traditional velocity layers in this library. What we have is normal and accent, like a classic drum machine, and that just really gives a kind of chunky, compressed sound to your rhythms. Um, the variation you'll get will come from round robins. So, with our cowbell here, if we've got alternating hits. So, the little tink is the normal hit. So you can set up that if you just want it playing that like you can, or if you just. But it's nice to just have this kind of alternating patterns work really well. So, with each of these percussion blocks, the yellow ones here, you can select alternatives. So in the um, cowbell, you can select cloves. Ah, sorry, I should have said cowbell can be damped or undamped. Quite a different sound. Back to our cloves. Uh, really nice, really crisp. Um, again, two channels, two, two mic positions here, uh, kind of far and close. Um, not a huge amount to say, clove is a clove, right? But it does feed into that classic drum machine sound. The next module, we have t uh, a few percussive, percussive toys here. Um, I'm going to come down here and maybe I'll tambourine. In this case, grit was processed with the overstayer. Um, quite handy to fit in a mix if you want a kind of if you want that crunchy upper mid sound to it, or if you want to fit it much higher. This works really well. Uh, again, it's a it's a it's a tambourine. What can you say? By the way, I mean another thing I, I've skipped over is that you can reverse everything when you do. You just need to um, change the start time. Works quite nicely on tambourine. Okay, tambourine. So uh, also cabasa in this block. You can choose a cabasa, which sounds really nice. Uh, I'm going to take the solo off. So again, you've got the. Twist one way, twist the other way. Normal accent. A really nice organic sound on that. You've got all the high end as you can see. It's often um, with these I find it's worthwhile cutting out some of that high end and even some low end. You want it to fit in a mix a little bit. Also Often good just to cut the tails down and get a nice crisp sound. Again, 
again, total organic movement there. You can take out the robins, it's dead. And what drum machine would be would not be complete without a guero. Again, we've got the alternating um, respect and to You've got the alternating. In this case, Brit was a very close mic. There is a further mic. Okay, and onto the shakers. Shakers, uh, another star of the show here. Accent forward back on the shake. So that works beautifully with our sequences just to set up your um, half accent, half normal pattern. Uh, sounds good. And the other shaker, really nice, is a whacker shaker. Very different sound. It's quite gritty. You can just Really chop down the chop down the decay. Get something really clicky. Works well with both. Okay, I think, I think we've covered that quite nicely. Um, Just a really quick thought of um, some other features here. Two effects channels. Um, convolution reverb. Now this features the full stereo versions of the echo chambers. Um, so, set up your mapping let's just look at the utilities you can see here you can set the key uh, for where you want the bass drum etc but drum choice of mappings uh, you can go GM there's a few e-drum mappings that we've um, we've brought over from our moon kits on drums type products um, you can just use these to and you can save your own to fit your own MIDI files but really it's a pretty conventional mapping um, everything where you would expect it to be uh, on the toms, etc., you just get this extra little um, pan control. 
uh, and where there is a set that has um, more than one key, like the hi-hats and the rides, you can just tweak the level against one another if you feel like, oh, the, you know, that bit's slightly too loud. I want it just slightly quieter. You can tweak them up and down. Uh, not much else to it. This, this just turns on your, um, your edit modes. Okay, um, that covers it all. Uh, you, you'll know our beat tools uh, if you've got our other products, Euclidean beats. We also have the traditional and poly beats. Check some of our other drum videos for in-depth explanations of those sequences. Uh, Hope you like it. Uh, it's a lot of fun um, and it sounds really great. Cheers. <laughs>